everyone. I got a great pleasure to welcome here Rona. Rona, a very distinguished member of the judge, uh, judge committee. Thank you. Uh, would you like to say something about yourself? Introduce yourself, where do you come from? And what is your affinity to the debate and Heart of Europe debating tournament? Okay. To answer the first part of your question, my name is Rona Leggett. I'm a citizen of the United States. I live in the state of Washington on the west coast of my country. And I have been a teacher uh, since I was 23 years old, and I am now 74 years old. <laughs> I am retired, and after retirement, I couldn't stop uh, my love and passion for debate. And so I decided in my senior years, I would like to continue to contribute to a better world. And how did your debating career start? I was a student in high school. I was attracted to a club. Never in a million years did I think I would be doing this all this time since. <laughs> so I guess it's fair to say I fell in love with debate. I teach communication classes mm -hmm. in argumentation and debate, public speaking, intercultural communication, persuasion, small group communication. So my specialty area as a faculty member was in the Department of Communication Studies at the University of Nevada, Reno. But during my career, I have taught at four or five institutions of higher learning. I see. And I spent the last 20 years at the University of Nevada, Reno. And when it was time to retire and turn over the teaching efforts to the younger faculty, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I looked around and I thought, where is my passion and how can I contribute back to the world. And that's why you come to Heart of Europe. Yes, I Is volunteer my time and I travel with regularity to various places around the world. Mm -hmm. I pay my own way, if you will, because debate is a struggling activity. There are many countries that it's difficult to get financial support. Okay. Um, for, for, for the judges or for the organizers? For the students. For the students. For the so, uh, students believe in their activity, but resources are limited. And in um, developing nations, they're especially limited. Mm -hmm. And as our world has changed and more countries have um, embraced, if you will, at least democratic or government which includes the people themselves. Mm -hmm. right. And my heritage, yes, is Yes, one where every person has rights, and rights should include voting. And when we move toward that, then we need people to help manage public dialogue. To manage the debate. Yes, right. to manage the debate. Anyway, um, so I believe debate benefits the student, it benefits the society, and in the end, it benefits our global village. And we are now in a global village. So the change from the 19th, 20th, and the 21st century mm -hmm. makes it more imperative. All the nations of the world are experiencing problems with Extreme immigration. Problems. Right, right. Yes, and now uh, we have to learn how to play in our own in a different schoolyard. So, so, but how do you feel about Heart of Europe in particular? Is it your first time here, or have you been here before? No, I came once before uh, because I wanted to come in. I come in the summertime. Right. I'm also a grandmother, if you will, <laughs> and help take care of my grandchildren. But in the summer, I get to continue being involved in the debate community. Mm -hmm. I contribute because of the fact that debate often has a struggle to stay alive in clubs mm -hmm. and organizations. Right. There are limited funds. You keep, you keep the fire burning, as a matter of fact. That's it. I contribute, if you will. In fact, debate is kept alive by the by the coaches and the teachers. Yes. Students come, they as participate. She, as she go. Yes, and then they leave. The reason we have debate in the world because there are debate educators mm -hmm. who believe in this, they hold it together, they dedicate their lives to that, you know. So, um, is there a message you would like to say uh, to future debaters, to people who are willing to maybe thinking of uh, joining Heart of Europe debating tournament? for year 2018? Yes, one reason I like the heart of Europe is it is not too large. 
So as everyone enjoys mm -hmm. debate, then international competition gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. And so when you go to a tournament with 3,000 people, there's no opportunity to interact. It's very impersonal. Yes, people stay in their own little clusters. Okay. When you come to the heart of Europe, it's small enough that people talk in the hall. Right. They play games with each other. Right. They may uh, <laughs> room with people from different countries. So we get true engagement. And competition becomes very fierce, if you will, as people become good in debate, they want to learn, the focus gets on winning, mm -hmm. not on cultural exchange. Right. And I feel like the heart of Europe allows for good competition, but also Keeping encourages, yes, intercultural exchange possibilities. Um, I enjoyed the organizers, if you will. The volunteers. That's you right. Know volunteers. And I have been involved in international debate now for 17 years. And um, I have to say that in my 17 years that I have developed an enormous respect for the Czech Republic and the debaters right. that they produce. So that attracted me here. The first time I judged uh, or was involved in an international debate competition, uh -huh. I was assigned as the coach to the Czech team. Czech, even the Czech team. Oh, yes. See. And this is Rona. She's got <laughs> a wealth of experience with Czech debating. Rona, I would like to thank you very okay, much for the you. interview. Okay. For your passion for debating and really the great deal of work you did for us. And I hope to see you in 2018 back in Olmos. Oh, okay, and I hope other people consider <laughs> this tournament. Let's it give doesn't a big matter if it's <laughs> famous or has status. This is a wonderful place to get an opportunity for exchange and good debate. Cheers. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.